everybody. Welcome to my channel, Stitching is Elementary. My name is Kara Lee, and it is Sunday, August 30th. Yes, I wanted to check because in my last video, I had my planner and everything in front of me, and I said the wrong date. I could have kicked myself. And of course, I'm new to all this editing, so I couldn't figure out how to go back and change it. So anyway, today is Sunday, August 30th, around 4.30 p.m. in the afternoon. I wanted to film this morning. I normally do Sunday mornings, um, but it just got to be busy. We went to Walmart, and I had work to do for plans for teaching this week, and still have a little bit more of that to do, but thought I'd take a break and do my floss tube. So this is floss tube number four. Um, and I just want to first say thank you to everybody for all the subscribers and all the really nice comments, especially in the last few days. For some reason, I've gotten a bunch more subscribers. I mean, still not, you know, a ton. I think I'm at like 220 or 230. Um, but so what I thought was when I get to 300, I thought I would do a giveaway because I had a pattern that I accidentally ordered two of. Um, and so I thought I would do a giveaway. giveaway. So when I get to 300 subscribers, I'm going to do... Um, this, ooh, can you see it? Ghosty, let me take it out. It's by Hands On Design. It's a new one, Ghosties, Ghosties and Gourds. And um, yeah, so this is what it looks like. It's like a little banner. I hope you're gonna be able to see that. I did different lighting. I guess that's okay, like that. Um, yeah, and so she gives you all the directions to make it into a banner. Um, I think it's really cute. And I guess she's gonna come out with them um, not, she said it wasn't a set schedule, but she will have other ones, other seasonal ones. So that will be our giveaway when and if I get to 300 subscribers. So if you're watching for the first time, please like and subscribe down below. There's a red button um, and you click the bell and you'll be notified when I post new videos. I try to post, well, I try every two weeks. It seems like it's been every three weeks. Um, once I got back to work, I just don't feel like I have enough done in two weeks. Um, but I'm still going to try to eventually get to doing every two weeks. Um, so anyway, so yes, if you'd like and click su subscribe, that would be great. I would appreciate it. Okay, so let's see. I have some notes because I feel like I get off track easy. Um, life update. I'm still teaching from home. It's going pretty well, as well as can be expected. Um, so that's, you know, it's going good. I, I like being home, but I, I miss the kids too, and it's it's not as good teaching from home, obviously, for them. Um, I don't know if I ever shared this. My oldest daughter is 27 or 28, and she got engaged a couple months ago. So that was really exciting. We really love her fiance. And um, so they're not planning anything yet. They're gonna wait until all this COVID stuff dies down and they can be sure that if they're reserved somewhere, um, we'll be able to go through with the, you know, with the wedding. We don't want anybody to get sick or anything. So, so she's waiting on that. Um, but we're very excited. Uh, let's see what else. My youngest daughter is back at UGA. Uh, she is a senior printmaking art major. Um, so she was nervous about going back. They're doing a combination of online and in-person teaching. Um, but she can go to the Dodd now, her art building. So she's back there working with all that equipment. So she's very happy about that because work, trying to do art or printmaking from home was, was rough for her. So I guess they, well, I don't guess I've seen it. They have a huge art building and they have all kinds of big, huge printing presses and all kinds of machinery. So um, she was missing that. So she's very happy to be back with all of her machines, tools, supplies that she needs to do her artwork. Okay, um, I think that is it. Oh, I did want to share something really quick before um, I get into all my whips. I'll go over um, my finishes, whips, and then um, new starts, and then my plans. And at the very end, I do like a little quilting corner kind of a thing, and I just show you I've been working on quilting. So if you're not interested in quilting, you can you can be done when I'm done with the cross stitch. But real quick, I just wanted to share, I always talk about my daughters, so I want to share my son, lives in um, Madison, Alabama, right outside of, outside of Huntsville. He works in Huntsville. Um, he is an uh, aerospace engineer there. So he graduated from UGA a couple years ago. So he is two years younger than my daughter, so he's 25. So anyway, he lives there, but there, I never really talk about him because he just works and there's not a whole lot new going on. 
but I wanted to show you something. I saw this up here on my shelf. I keep this. It's something he made for me when he was like five out of Legos. He was super big into Legos. Let me turn and show you. And I remember one day I was sitting there. I got to stay home when they were um, little, so that was really nice. I didn't have to work. Um, so I was sewing during the day, and he kept coming up and just interrupting me. Um, and so I kept telling him things to make with his Legos. So I was like, well, go back and make this, and he'd be back in two seconds. I'm like, go back and make this, and he'd be back in two seconds. So I said, go make me a sewing machine, you know, since I was sewing on my machine. I said, like, go make me a sewing machine, and he runs away, and I thought, oh, he's going to be gone forever. Comes back. Took him a little longer, but still not even probably 15 minutes. Comes back with this little sewing machine out of Legos. So what, he's 25 now, so I've kept this 20 years old. <laughs> but I thought it was so cute. He even put the little... I don't know, I guess it comes with a little rope on there to make it look like thread and everything. So anyway, thought I'd share that about my son. Um, okay, let's get on to finishes. So I had two, I'll put it back up here. Um, I had two finishes and one is an FFO. In fact, I just finished it completely a few minutes ago. Um, so I'll go with that first. My FFO is Ye Old Crow Sampler. Um, I was watching the floss tuber um, Elizabeth Can Stitch, Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch, and she was talking about wanting to do a fall, hashtag fall frenzy, and try to get a lot of fall stuff done here since we're almost there. Um, and I was like, oh, I love that idea because as we know, I have so many Halloween which I'll call fall patterns. I have a little bit of just fall, um, but I don't have hardly anything decorated around my house for cross stitch uh, Halloween and fall. So I thought I'm gonna do that along with her. Um, so anyway, so she was doing this one. So I saw that and I ordered it and I got that done pretty quick. It took me exactly a week. I started it last Friday and I finished stitching it this Friday. So it's Yield Curl by Heart and Hand. And I decided to frame it, so here it is. Ooh, I put lights like right behind me today and I'm hoping, there we go, it's not too bad of a glare. I hope when I get done with the video the lighting is not horrible. Anyway, Yield Crow, so I did it on um, a hand dyed 18 count Ada that I hand dyed myself. Um, it's like an apple green dye, I think is what, what it was, and then I coffee tea dyed it. Um, yeah, so anyway, and then I did the background with a black and white check and I did it kind of on the diagonal. Um, Priscilla and Chelsea from Stitching with the Housewives, she, I think she one time in her video recommended doing it on the diagonal because then you don't have to worry about lining things up. So I did that and then this frame, a little closer so you can see the details. Ooh. This frame I got at Hobby Lobby, but it was like a dark minty green, but it was the perfect size and I love the detail on it. Um, so yeah, it's from Hobby Lobby, here's the side, here's the back, and so I just painted it, and I painted it with, um, Rust-Oleum chalk paint, the spray, it's, it's a charcoal color, but then I wanted to sand it, because I kind of wanted to make it look vintage -y. but when I went to sand it, it showed up that green color, and that green color totally clashed with the green Ada, so I was like, oh darn, and I had thought that would happen, so I actually painted the frame white first, and let that dry and then I painted it black so I thought the white would show up but it just sanded everything off and you saw the green. So I have white wax that I put over my chalk painted stuff and I so I put that white wax on to make it look a little more vintagey and dingy. So yeah, I really like how that came out. So I have one Halloween cross stitch done to display. Um, and then the other thing I started was, let me show you the picture. It's um, Shepherd's Bush Halloween Trifles, I guess that's how you say that. So there's three of them on this little card here. <laughs> um, and I did the big Halloween one first. And I tried to do it just like hers. I pulled my own Ada, but I did it, I mean, I pulled my own floss, but I did it on white Ada. So there's that. I hope this lighting is good. It kind of looks good, but then when I put stuff close, it glares. So yeah, so I did it on really stiff white Ada. I'm gonna make it into a pillow, but um, there's buttons. 
I don't know if you can tell in here, but if you've ever seen one of, seen one of these before, she put the buttons on them. So I just ordered from just another button company the button pack for that. So I have to wait for that to come to put those on and finish it. Um, so yeah, so those, those are my two finishes. Um, let's see, what's next? Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I left them out of my chair where I sit. So, first we have Positivity Rules, the stitch along that I'm doing. And I was ahead, but now I'm of course behind. That always happens. Um, so we were supposed to be on, it was part two. And I can't show you the chart and there's not just a picture. But um, I guess I should have found a picture and downloaded it. But the, it is the roof, which is all I got done. Well, I didn't even get done. I just did this part right here and this part right here is a roof. But then there's also going to be um, on top of that like a pink part, a pink and a red part to the roof. And then up above is a rainbow and clouds and moons and stars. So I cannot wait to get to that because part three just came out. So I need to get working on this. And this is 16 count pink, like pink Ada that I hand dyed. Um, but it's really easy to stitch on. So I just was trying to get that yule curl done. So that's like all I worked on for about a week. So this got put behind, but I'll catch up on it. So that is positively, Positivity Rules, and that's through Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Um, and I guess they're just starting another, a Christmas stitch along too, which is like this cute tree with little animals in it and that. I was thinking if you had little kids, that would be super cute in a little kid's room. Um, and it's going to be like a wintry theme. But yeah, they have a lot of cute stitch alongs. And I think I had said before, I'm going to make that, finish that off and put it on the front of a wreath for my classroom door when we go back at some point. So that's one. Pull all of them up here. This is my Lori Holt bag. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. I'm sure you have. Um, this is one of her fabrics from her last collection. I don't remember the name of it. Vintage Happy something. Um, but my quilt shop had these and I keep all my whips in here. Okay, let's see. New start. I have these bags I get from Amazon, and I've talked about those before too, but they're nice for I'm trying to make project bags for everything, but so far I have one made. So that's another thing I want to get to doing is getting more made. Okay. So we'll go over in my garden. I worked on a little bit. So this is in my garden from the Blackbird Design Sewing Club book. This is the first one I've done from here. Um, and this isn't, you'll be like, oh, it's not really any different than what you had done last time. No, it's really not. But I changed my mind on one of the colors. So that red color that's here and the door and these little berries and, and these little teeny berries there. Let's see if you can see that. That red color was like a rusty color. It was a DMC. And I can tell you which one. Look at my totally messy floss. Um, it was DMC 918. So it was this rusty color. And I thought, oh, I don't really like that. I'm not, I'm more into, I don't know. I'm just not into to rusty colors. <laughs> no. I just didn't love it. So um, I'm like, no, I'm going to use it though, because that's what they call for. And I should just use it. I probably will like it when I'm all done. Well, I decided I just, I just didn't like it. So I thought I'm going to switch to red. I saw another Blackbird Designs design and it had like a burgundy red with these kind of similar colors. So I thought I'm just going to switch to that. So I switched to Cherry Cob, uh, Classic Color Works Cherry Cobbler. Yeah, which doesn't look that different there, but it is. Well, let's put them close together. You can see it's more burgundy-ish. And I didn't have that much done. So I tore out the door and the, the little berries and that top of that flower and I just made it red and now I like it a lot better. So, but once again, because I was working on the Halloween stuff, I didn't get that much, that much done. So that's that one. Oops. And then I did do quite a bit more on bobbing for pumpkins. It's not going to look like a lot, but I worked on this, I counted, for like six days. Um, this just takes a long time, this one. So this is, let me take it out of the bag 
always a glare, but with the light the way I have it, it seems even worse. Um, this is Bobbing for Pumpkins by Brenda Gervais, which I think is so super cute. That little owl up there. So I got one witch almost done. Well, she's done. I just have to do her broom and I have to do her feet. And this is on, this is on Picture This Plus. I want to say Legacy. I'm not totally sure if it's one of the beige ones, but I think it's Legacy. So there is my little witch. And I love the little polka dots on her dress. I think that's so cute. I hope you can see. I should probably just stop and switch these lights. I hope it's okay. All right. So that is bobbing for pumpkins. And I am using mostly the call for colors, I believe. So there's kind of all the really messy flosses, lots of oranges and greens. I think I just switched up what she calls for. There's like some little stars up here in the background and they weren't showing up on my fabric. So I just changed that a little bit, but most of them are the call for. And then I worked a teeny bit on Rovaris. Um, I always forget the year, 1692. And it's all the witches of Salem. And those little frames uh, with their names. So I just got, last time I had had one more frame done. And now I have three of them done. So there's that. So I'm going to go all the way across. There are five across the top. So I was going to do all the frames across the top first, and then I'll go back and put in the little girls. Martha. Martha is done. So that's that one. Actually, this might be ale. I take that back. I think this is... Yes, yeah, so this one is ale. I think that Bobbin for Pumpkins is Legacy. This one is definitely ale. And that is just with DMC 310 is the girls. And carriage black is what I'm using for the frames. So there's just a little difference. You could just use DMC 310 for all of it and it would look totally fine. Okay, and then the last one I was working on this one the last couple days is the coffee first um, pattern that I think I said I was gonna start off in my last video. No, no, I had started it and I had a lot done. That's right, I had started and I had gotten a lot done. I didn't get as much done this time. I didn't get as much done on anything because I was finishing those two Halloween ones. But it's Coffee First by Brenda Gervais and she has a Halloween one out now and I really want to do it. So I want to get this one done. So it's still in the key snap, but here's what I have. And that's, it's mostly the cup, if you can see, is what I'm working on. Just right here, the coffee cup, so if you can see. And the coffee cup in her pattern, she called for bamboo. I went with a cream because I was afraid on that plaid it wasn't going to show up well. I'm still not sure. It might have looked better with the light, but I was just afraid it'd be too light. So anyway, so this cream is, um, and I think I went over my flosses last time, but the, the cup is Butter by Victorian Motto. It's just like a really creamy color. Kind of reminded me of the color Ray Dunn, the real mugs, the real, the real color. So that's why I picked it. So that is Poppy first. And I think that is, is that all my wigs? I think it might be. I was really working on those two Halloween ones that I did not get a ton done. Let's see. Yep, that's it. All right, maybe this video is going to be faster than the last one. They always seem to go on too long. Okay, but, um, I started a new one too. And can we guess what season? Yes. Halloween again. I've had these oops. Oh, I've had these patterns for a while. They are um, hands-on design scary apothecary. Which I think are so adorable. Again, another um, you know, you could make them into like a little garland banner kind of thing. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to be done forever. There's nine of these, um, and I'm just on the first one, but aren't they so cute? Now I use, let's see, I use mostly the call for colors. It calls for frog's legs. So I'm not using that. I'm using Victorian Motto Country Lime for the green. 
And then it calls for Zac Black. I am using Zac Black, classic Colorworks, Zac Black. Um, it calls for Shamrock, which I thought was interesting. And I am using that. It's like a bluey green. Um, and River Rocks. Haha, <laughs> River Rocks. Okay, I was just looking for this for another pattern I was pulling out. And I don't remember which one it was, but... I think it was Halloween. Um, I'm like, I thought I had that. I thought I had it somewhere. <laughs> this is why I thought I had it, and I do. But it's just in a different one. So that's just a variegated gray color. Okay, so River Rock. So I, those are all the called for colors I used, but then I called for Pumpkin Harvest. And that just seemed too light to me. I don't know. I do, it's like a peachy orange. So I, I had ordered from Victoria Motto her Halloween set. And they are such cool names. They're like Spooky Hollow and Headless Horsemen. Those are the names of the floss. So anyway, this one, actually, oh, I, there's a lot of cool oranges in that set, but this is actually from one of my monthly, um, I also do her monthly club. And so this one is Sunspots. I thought it was from that set, but I don't think it was. But it's a really gorgeous orange. So that's so why I just changed out the orange and the green. And the rest are the called for. And then it also calls for some purple Kranik, I think that's how you say that, Kranik. And so I've never worked with that before. So if anybody has any tips, leave them down in my comments because I've heard that it can be hard to work with. Okay, so and here's what I got done. Just the, not even the whole top, but the cauldron. And this was rough to, um, you know, stitch that orange and not go in the wrong spot where the words are supposed to be. So like I was counting and just stitching the orange and then I wanted to go back and put in the color, like it's in River Rocks, I think, the gray. You see the, you close, cause I don't know about this light. So that the words are in gray. So that was kind of, kind of hard. So what I did was I had done this on another pattern. I made what they call a working copy. And I, so I just made a copy of the chart and I highlight in each time I stitch. And it worked. It helped. I didn't make any mistakes. So there we go. And I'm doing this on smoky white 32 count linen. I think it's called smoky white. Yeah. 32 count linen. I am loving the linen. So 28 I totally love, but 32 I can absolutely do too. So now I'm thinking I got to try 36. Those reading glasses have just oh, been awesome. Um, okay. So that was my new start. And that was it. I have wanted to start a bunch of Halloween stuff and I've just been trying to not start everything because I'd like to finish some more things first. I feel I, my rule for myself has been do one holiday. Once you finish that one, you can start another that holiday. So, you know, to have one Halloween going, one Christmas going, one spring even, one patriotic, and then when I finish it, I'd start a new one, which I'm, I like to be very organized. So I think that I like the idea of that. But this time of year when I know Halloween's coming, I'm like, oh, that's all I want to start. So we'll go on to new, my plans now, um, which is to start a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> um, so I do want to do, I want to start another one of the Halloween trifles to get done for my little dough bowl. Um, so I think I'm going to start the green one. And they did that on 32 count, but I have a tropical green, 28 count tropical green. Sorry for the glare, but that's what it looks like. So um, I'm gonna do it on that one. So that I wanna start. And then this I really wanna start. I don't know if I will. I mean, this is gonna be a next year thing anyway, but it's just so cute and I love the way they finished it. So this is, um, you know, Stitching with the Housewives makes, makes their own patterns now. And so this is one that was fairly recent called Trick or Treat. I'm sure you all know about it already, but I think I've said this before. I love witches. I love witchy halloween -y stuff, but cute witchy stuff. Well, this is just so crazy cute witchy. I just love it. And they finished it on that pumpkin. And so I got that pumpkin from Hobby Lobby. Um, so I'm ready to go. I just have to stitch it. And I got 28 count black linen So I may start that this week for Witchy Wednesday, or maybe not. We'll see. I really should just work on bobbing for pumpkins. That's what I should do. 
here are all the flosses for it. Oh, and this, this is mostly the call for colors. Um, but this is, this is one of those from that uh, Victorian Motto Halloween pack. It's called Whispering Wind. Another really pretty orange. Those are all, oh, this is the Pumpkin Harvest. So that's in there too. So that was the Pumpkin Harvest that was called for for the um, Scary Apothecary. But I just, I like the bright orange a little bit better for that. So they're both in this one. So we'll see. I actually thought about starting it today, but I have another one coming up today. Priscilla and Chelsea used to do, I don't know if they still do so much this, um, certain days of the week were certain things. So Sunday, I think is like Santa Sunday. So I have a Christmas one that I need to start. So I'm, I really think I'm going to start that one tonight, even if I just get a teeny bit in. But I'll show you that in a minute because there's one other Halloween one. So this one is the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. And I've never done one of theirs and I've wanted to because their stuff's so cute. So this is their Midnight Way. It's a um, mystery stitch along. And that's the first part there. And I have everything to do it. So I'm going to stitch it on 28 count Whimsy Cashel, which is what they called for. So it's a really pretty kind of deep lavender, very variegated. Um, and then I have all the, I think we just do all DMCs. So these are all the DMCs that it calls for. So there's, you know, a few greens. There's, I love this pink and this like purpley magenta color. And then there's this orange and this kind of peachy color. Ah. And this really gold, like look at that, oh, so pretty. And then there's some blue and just a gray and some on the lime green, like I said. So yeah, I really love those colors. So we'll probably start that by next time I talk to you as well. Well, I'll definitely start that one because that's a stitch along. So really I should start that one before I start the stitching with the housewives trick or treat one, but we'll see. <clears throat> So the Christmas one um, I plan to start today is Christmas Dreams, and I have the sheet protector, so let me take it out since we're really having trouble with Claire today. It's called Christmas Dreams, and it is a uh, five-part mystery sampler as well. Seems like if I tilt it, it shows up better. I'm hoping you see it, but isn't that house adorable? And apparently what they have you do is stitch all these frames around the outside, and then, um, and those will all be coming months, and then the center part. So that's all the first month. I haven't actually read through it, but that's what it looks like. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start that today. And that is fun, so I can at least have something Christmas going. That is on also 28 count, um, and this is what they called for. Oh, I don't remember the name of it. Okay, hold on, let me look up the name. Oh, I want to say it's like moss or something. Well, if you want to know, you can ask me in the questions and I will look it up. But it's, it is like a mossy green color. So I put lights behind my camera today. Like I have this five armed like light thing. Because when I have the, the light on, otherwise it would be right above the camera. And I feel like it just washes things out. And then the lights behind me, when they're just on, I don't feel like it's quite enough. And I think lights are supposed to be behind the camera, not behind you. And I'm right by windows, but we don't get a whole, the light doesn't come in a lot. We have a real shaded house with lots of trees. So anyway, that is a mossy green. Hopefully you can see it. And like I said, 28 count. And then I have the DMCs and I did eventually get the fancy floss set because I really like this one. So I'll just show you real quick and then when I start it I can go through them next time more but it's just deep reds, some light greens and some dark greens and then this is onyx, black onyx and pecan, Weeks Dye Works pecan. So yeah, just like those, like that. so really pretty greens and reds. Oh here it is. Dusty Green 28 Count Linen by Wilchet, or have you said that? Wilchet? Wil I can't say it. 
Okay, so that is, oh, oh no, I lied, that's not all my plans. I lied. Um, I got this, this is part of my haul though, going in the haul. So you know what, I'll save that for last. Um, I also was planning on, they're doing, I guess they always do something called, okay, let me think, I can remember the name of it. Um, September, Sampler September, I think that's what they called it. On Instagram I saw it. Um, and I think in somebody's video they talked about it. And I've been wanting to start samplers. Um, but the reproduction samplers just always look kind of really intimidating. Um, I have started that Liberty's Welcome. So I, that's my patriotic stitch that I'm working on. I haven't worked on it this time though. So, but I thought, since I love Halloween, a great sampler to start on would be, and this actually I think is Hall. I don't think I had this last time. Plum, Plum Street Samplers Jack's Bash. And it's like a Halloween-y sampler. So cute. So Jack's Bash. And those two little people there. <laughs> so, so cute. And what does it say? It says, Here in the roughed and autumn bower, the knobby gourd, and Butterflower, ye merry make and sing hooray to our friend Jack on his birthday. And at the top it says Happy Halloween. So, cute, cute, cute. So I'm gonna start that for sampler September. So not till September, but start that. And if I get, I think I'll probably start this one too, because this one's every day and I really need to start making like everyday stuff so I have more to decorate with. And I've had this one for a while. It's Sampler Hill by Brenda Gervais. It's so cute. I love the alphabet. I've heard other floss tubers say they like they'll leave out the alphabet when they stitch things. I don't really like that. I'm like, oh, must be the teacher in me. I love the alphabet. So there it is. Sampler Hill. So I think that's really pretty. How big is that? 100? No, it's not huge. 197 by 150. I mean, it's big, but it's not gigantic. Okay, so and I have those in the one project bag I made because I always thought I would use this one as, I think it's kind of on a reproduction vintage looking, so I thought I'd use that for my samplers. I did get some really cool skull fabric to make a Halloween one at Joann's. Their fabric's kind of chintzy, but it was cool. Their holiday stuff especially was cool. So anyway, so those are all of my plans, except for the last one, and this will lead us into haul is um, I was watching Jen Stitching Niche. Um, she has an Etsy shop and she has a floss tube. So it's Jen's Stitching Niche, N-I-C-H-E. And she said she was gonna start doing these um, monthly mini samplers. And I thought, well, that would be fine because I need more stuff, like I said, for all the time to put up and you could change them out every month. So she had started with August, but by the time I ordered them from her, you know, I'm not going to get August done now when we're at the end of August. Well, it's August 30th. So, uh, and I got these a couple weeks ago. And I'm like, ooh, I'll start September and I'll be done by September. Well, I'm obviously not even going to, I haven't even started it yet. But, plan to start that this week. And it's so little. And letters are really quick. That was the cool thing about the Yule Crow. The letters go really, really fast. So that was fun. So this lady has a whole bunch of these. Well, one for every month, so 12. So I got... So now we're moving into haul. I got, so I got August. I kind of want to take these all out of the package because that'll take forever. Yeah, that's not bad. So it has a beehive, which I love beehive stuff. So that's August. And then I got October. Cute cat on a pumpkin. And November. So I think I got up to February. The cute little squirrel. And December. And these are 31 by 73, so they're really teeny. And January. I was thinking about maybe trying to put a snowman in on that one because I would really like snowman. Cute. And then February. And that's the last one. So I'll just have to get March, April, May, June, July to have them all. So those are the mini samplers 
And then I found this on 123 Stitch. There's not much else. So I found this on 123 Stitch though, and I think I had seen somebody on Instagram show it, and I had never seen it before. It's called Traveling Stitcher. Stitcher. And it shows a little um, stitching kit. So they've stitched that and put it on this little kit. But it says everywhere, it does not come with directions to make the kit. So I was like, oh. I don't know, there probably were directions at one time somewhere, but I don't know where. So if anybody knows where you can find the directions, oh goodness, to make that, comment below and let me know. But I thought maybe I would make it into, it's like a, okay, so this is like a pocket and then there's a needle book up above. Um, so I thought maybe I would just make it into a project bag and then have a needle book that goes with it. So that's my plan. And it came with the floss, so that was cool says it's pattern number 61, Nashville 2009. So maybe the directions for how to do it were a Nashville exclusive. I don't know. I think it's really cute. And then I can't remember if I showed this before. Hands on design, put on the hat. Um, a little. I thought that'd be cute with my Halloween stuff, my dobo. So maybe I'll get to it this year. We'll see. It comes with a piece of purple velvet. So pretty in the back. So that is all my stitchy haul. I just had a couple other little things I to show you. Um, I was at Michael's yesterday and they have a ton of Halloween stuff in now. It's looking really cute. So if you're into Halloween, go to Michael's. But I just picked up this flag, Happy Halloween. I'm really into these little garden flags. I have one out back and one out front. This is what it looks like. I didn't take it out of the package yet, but it's a little cat and pumpkins. So I thought that was cute. I'm gonna put it on my back porch. And then I belong to the Fat Quarter Shop Sew Sampler box, monthly box. And so this is everything I got that came in the box this month. I don't have the box because my dog loves to chew up the box. Um, so as soon as I get it, she's like all over me, wanting me to open it and give her the box. So I did. But it was, there's a different theme each month. And this one was Rise and Shine. Was the theme. And then on the back of here... Um, they have a coupon, always, always a really good one, like 20% off jelly rolls or 20% off layer cakes, or this time it is a percentage off their foundation paper pads, which I've been wanting to get, so I was excited about that. Um, so yeah, so that's coupon. So it's, I think I pay, I think it's $31.70 a month, that's including shipping, I think. Um, yeah, so you get a lot of stuff. So I loved this. We got two charm packs. And they were the Backyard Blooms, come on, Backyard Blooms by Allison Harris, Harris? Yeah, she, I think her blog is Cluck Cluck So. I think that's it, I hope I'm not wrong. She has a really cute blog, I think that's it. But if I'm wrong, I will, I will fix it next time. Um, I didn't look that up before I got on here. But really pretty, and I had seen a pattern she did when she was just, this wasn't out yet. Um, with stars and stuff. It's, it's a really pretty pattern. I have that. I haven't obviously made it yet. And she also has one with hens that's super cute. So I really like that for my kitchen. I thought I would use it. And then we got Crazy Quilt Paper by Riley Blake. Little ones, five inch ones, so you can use charm squares. And then some betweens, which are for hand quilting, which I can do but I've not done in a long time. And then we got these new Kimberly Cuts Rotating Cutting Mats. This is the little one, but they have bigger sizes, and there is a little circle so it rotates. Um, I'm excited about this, because I, I have two. I have a giant 17-inch uh, Olfa cutting mat, and then a 12-inch, I think it is, but that giant one is so awesome. Like, you can fit everything on there. It's really nice, so that's exciting. And then this, there always is a pattern to go with the fabric, and usually they give you, like, enough to do a small size version of the quilt and then the directions are back for how many you'd need to. So this is how much you have enough to do and this is what you, you, how many more you'd have to get to a bigger size. So that's pretty much how they always do it. So really cute. I mean for 30 bucks I think that's pretty good. And you get to try new things and sometimes I'll get like notions that I use a lot. Um, I'm like oh yay more of those notions. And then you also get the there's always a block of the month like pattern in it. This time their theme is greatest hits, so so you always get a pattern, and it'll so if you do it for the whole year, you'll get every block pattern for that particular 
so long. I'm not explaining it well at all. You wouldn't know as a teacher. Um, so it's it's a monthly block pattern you get, and at the end of the 12 months, you have all the pattern, all the patterns you need to sew the whole quilt together. There. See, this is what happens when I film later in the day. I'm tired. I tend to, I'm good early in the morning, and as the day goes on, I, I wane, and I have not had a cup of coffee yet. I should have made that to have with me. Um, so that is all of my haul. So I did much better than last time. Um, yeah, I also was going to say I get Stitch Fix. I used to get it, and I started getting it again. It's a, it's a clothing monthly kind of thing, and you can do either every month, every two months, or whatever, and they send you um, clothes that they think you would like. So it's like a clothing subscription box. Um, so I didn't know if anybody's interested in seeing when I get the stitch fix each month. If you are, comment below and next month I can show you. Um, I got some really cool things this time. I love polka dots and two of the things, it was like a mustard top with white polka dots and then the other one was a sweater with polka dots. So I was really excited. Okay, so that is it for that now. So if you are don't care about quilting, thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you next time. And I, everybody else, I'm going to stop and go to my quilty corner, and I'll be right back. Okay. Well, welcome back. Okay, I just thought it would be easier here to show you quilts because they're bigger. Now, none of these are completely done. So, um, but still, they're way bigger than just cross-stitch pieces. So, first of all, I didn't get to work on my Blackbird Raven quilt much, but I did get the fifth block all fused on. So, I'll hold it back further. So I really like that. I think that's super cool. I love the house. So if you remember, I'm fusing them all. It is a regular hand applique pattern. They don't give you fusible directions, but I just reversed. I copied all the patterns and then cut them out and then I just reverse them. Um, so I'm fusing them all first and then when I get that all done, I'm gonna machine applique around all of them and then sew it together. So I did get one done. And then this is what I've been so busy on. Um, I have, hold on, I have all the Lori Holtz books. I love her stuff. I'm so happy. But this is the original Farm Girl Vintage. And there is a patchwork pumpkin block in here. And it'll probably turn right to that page because I've been there so much. Let's see. Well, actually, I shouldn't even show you that because I have little directions there, so I guess I shouldn't show you the inside book, but a great book. It's all blocks in 12-inch and 6-inch, so you can, like, make a sampler almost. Like, you could make some 12-inch, you could make some 6-inch, and she has all different ideas in the back of the book for different settings and different types of quilts, so they're really nice. Her second one, she came out with a second Farm Girl Vintage, too, and it's great, so that'll just give you an idea of a lot of the blocks that are in there. I'm sure you all have seen this before. So, I decided... I had cut out a bunch of two and a half inch squares to make the 12 inch pumpkin blocks like, I don't know, years ago. And I found them this January. I went crazy and organized in here. And I found them. I thought, well, I'm just going to start sewing them together. So I decided I'm just doing all 12 inch pumpkins. And it's going to be four row, four pumpkins across by five down. So I'm just going to hold it by my face. So that is the patchwork pumpkin. The background is a Riley Bake orange dot on white. There we go. So yeah, so I think they're coming out really cute. I used uh, just a ton of my orange scraps from my stash. Just all the oranges I had I cut up. Um, so that, so yeah, so it'll be four across by five down and it's going to have these. So what I'm doing right now is sewing the sashing on with the cornerstones. So I use two different greens. The same greens that I'd use two greens in the stems and then for the cornerstones, I use two greens. So I will have that sewn together by the next time I see you. Probably not quilted, that's what always stops me. I've been learning to long arm quilt at my quilt shop, Tiny Stitches. Um, my lady named Cheryl, who's awesome, that's also who got me into cross stitch. Um, kind of that, in fact, quarter shop. I used to watch their floss tube. And I was like, oh, I gotta try that. And then Cheryl kept showing me her stuff, and I'm like, yeah, I definitely need to try that, so. Now I don't get as much quilting done because I cross stitch so much, but that's okay. So anyway, um, I love going there and doing the long arm machine, but with COVID and that, I've done it once since this has all been going on, um, but 
I just haven't got much. So I'm going to try to do this one on my machine, I think. I think I might just do just an all over, like, I do this thing where it's just a, like a meander almost, and I swirl, and I do like stars in it. And I can do that really well, and I love it. It's like the only thing I can really do on the machine, you know, with the machine, because <clears throat> it's just hard because the throat space, it's hard to squish it all in there. Um, so that's why big quilts are harder on your home machine. And I had gotten a Juki because it has a bigger throat space, but my dogs had knocked it down when we moved and it's never worked right for machine quilting again. So that's a bummer. I've tried to have it fixed quite a few times and it just hasn't worked. So I think that is everything. Oh, I will show you this one more thing. Also from, oh yeah, two more little things. Also from Lori Holt, I got the Quilter's Cottage uh, quilt kit. Which I think actually, it's a stitch along. Do I have the book here? I don't have the book. So she's got a Quilter's Cottage book. I'm sure you've seen it too. And it's just, a, it's a cute cottage. Um, but here are all the fabrics. All her vintage Happy 2 fabrics that go with it. Oh, here's the picture of it right there. So that's Quilter's Cottage. So there's a stitch along going on with it right now. I think I'm gonna wait and actually do it after the new year. I really like to do like just all the time stuff, you know, stuff I can keep out all year right after Christmas. Cause by the time Christmas is over, I'm like kind of done with holidays. I just want everything. I kind of go back to a lot of blues and whites and I just want it to be clean and calm. Um, so yes, yeah, so I think I'm going to work on that then. And this is the background, which is like a cheater panel, orange peel cheater panel, I guess she has. And I just love that. Well, it's the same as the bag um, that I showed you before. So I think that is everything. Yeah. So thanks for staying and watching about my quilty stuff. Um, thanks for joining me. Thank you to all my new subscribers um, and everybody who's left such sweet comments. You guys are so, so sweet. So I really appreciate it. So have a great, hopefully couple weeks. I'll see you in two or three weeks. Happy stitching. Yeah.